Good morning, everyone. How are we this morning? Let's stand up in the presence of God. Guys, we want to let you know this altar is open for you. If you need some room to worship, you want to come dance, you want to kind of worship Him, you want to lay flat on your face before the Lord, this place, this area is for you. We just want to open it up to you and let you know you're more than welcome to come on forward. Let us pray. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your goodness. We thank you that you pour out your goodness on us every day. Your presence is living within us. Lord, we, we look forward to what you have for us this morning. And we open up our hearts ready to receive. And here in this moment, this time of praise and worship, Father, we bring to you our very best. We bring to you praise. We bring to you adoration. We bring to you worship. We want to thank you for all that you've done for us. We want to magnify your name. We want to make your name great in the earth. And so, Father, I just thank you. I ask you to receive our praise and worship this morning. Let it be love to you. It's our love song to you, Father. And we just love you this morning. We just uh, speak life and blessings over all that we do today. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Filled with wonder as we behold the man with fire in his eyes, the very word of God, you are worthy, every kingdom and every nation bowing down, we crown you with many crowns, every creed and tribe.
we know you're coming soon. As we get shout till the whole world hears it. We'll shout till the whole world knows. You know, there's, a, there's an instruction that's given to us in the very last part of the 
Bible, very last chapter in the Bible, in Revelation chapter 20, 22. And there's something that the writer here declares to us, and he says in verse 17 of Revelation 22, it says, the Holy Spirit and the bride, and the Amplified says this, the church, the true Christians, say come. And let him who is listening say come. And let everyone come who is thirsty. You see, there has to be a declaration and a, and a, and a decree made of come in order for people to be thirsty. See, there has to be this first this, this thing that we have to declare. There's something that we have to shout. There's something that we have to speak. And what did they say? The Holy Spirit and the bride are declaring something. And what are they declaring? Come. Then it says, and let everyone say what? Come. <laughs> come. And let everyone come who is thirsty. And it says this, who is painfully conscious of his need of those things by which the soul is refreshed, supported, and strengthened. And whoever earnestly desires to, to do it, let him come. Let appropriate and drink the water of life without cost. Hallelujah. There's things available in his presence that you can't find anywhere else. There are some things that our world is looking for and they cannot find it in anything else but in the presence of the Lord. That's why we need to be the voice in the earth that is shouting, come Jesus and come quickly. Come Lord Jesus and come quickly. Come Lord Jesus and come quickly. Come Jesus, come for Lord Jesus and come quickly. Oh Father, we thank you. We thank you for your presence that's moving and working in the earth today. And we have a great expectancy on the inside of us. We push aside discouragement. We push aside things that are happening in the earth and the things that are happening in the world. We push aside every, every bit of division, everything that would weigh heavy on any people's hearts. And we declare, come Lord Jesus, come quickly. You know, in the early days of the church, and this is, this is document, document, documented by a writer in the, in the early days of the Roman church, and it was written by a, a name by the, by the name of a man, Tertullian. And uh, this was years after the church had, was, was given birth to, and it said that the Roman government would send in spies to the, the churches. And, and, and they came back, and this was the report they came back, and I, I don't have it in front of me to read it word for word, but bottom line, it came this. They gather together in, in a room that has nothing on the walls, and it says, and they, they have this uncommon love one for another. And it says, and, and they're talking about, and talking about this man named Jesus like he's gonna show up anytime. Now, that was, that's what the spies had to say about the early church. See, we need to be talking about this man named Jesus that we just expect that he's going to show up anytime. Well, I, I know I have, I have two facts here. One, the word says where two or three are gathered in his name, there he is. So he's here right now. You're watching us at home right now. Well, you're part of the two or three that's here. So he's right there at home with you right now. So not only we, 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 are, we, we expect that he's going to show when we gather, but we are also expecting that he is returning for his bride. Hallelujah. And does that make you excited this morning? Well, give him a shout of praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Woo. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Woo. Are you getting ready? Are you getting ready? You know, we're one, you know, we're one day closer than we were yesterday. Hallelujah. You know, we're, we're 24 minutes closer than when this first service first started. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Well, Father, we just, we love you today and, and we just thank you, Lord, and that for your faithfulness in our lives. And we are, we are thirsty. Birth, continue to birth and fan the flame on the inside of our hearts 
for a hunger and expectancy for your return. Because we know this is the time. We know according to the prophetic word, they said the thing that Dr. Savell, you said through Dr. Savell, that as we step into 2021, you said through him that we would see it with our eyes, a great shifting, a great shaking and a great displacing. So even in the first 10 days of this year, we have seen that. We're, we're seeing it with our eyes. But he also, the word from you said this, that afterwards we would see a great awakening and we would see a great outpouring. So our eyes are off what this world has to offer and what's happening in this world and our eyes are on you. So have your way in the service. Holy Spirit, thank you for being our teacher. Thank you for teaching, teaching us, us in the way that we should go to walk in the fulfillment of what you have for us for 2021. Because we know that 2021 is a year of abundant overflow. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, give him a shout of praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. You can give someone a high five. You know, there were people in the early days, in, in, and this was in the first 60 years of the birth of the church, because we see even in Peter's writings, in Second Peter, that they were actually making fun of the church because they were talking about Jesus coming quickly. You know, they were, they were making, let me, let's go there real quick. I, this isn't my message, or, but I, I want you to see this because we have to have an expectancy and not let, not let complacency in as it pertains to what God wants to do in the earth. Now, now think, even think about it from this perspective that even Jesus is coming, we know that Ananias, we, we know that um, Simeon and we know that Anna were, it said that they were devoted to the Lord. And it said they were eagerly waiting the coming of the Messiah. Now that was just Jesus coming to be born in the earth. How much more is he looking for a people? Looking for a people that have that same devoted heart. That same hunger and that same expectancy, just like Simeon and Anna did. And it wasn't just Simeon and Anna, and it was all, he said, and said, and all those that were waiting for the coming of the Messiah. In second, in second Peter, it says this, it says, it says that you may be mindful of the words which were spoken by the holy prophets and of the commandments of the, us, the, the apostles of the Lord and Savior, knowing this first that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust and saying, where is the promise of his coming? Scoffers. I mean, there are going to be people who are going to say, well, where is the... We, you've been, you, we, Pastor, they've been saying that Jesus is coming ever since I started going to church with my mom when I was a little boy, a little girl. And, and see, see w w that, that, is the, that is the attitude of the enemy. That's the attitude of the Antichrist spirit to stop us expecting what we need to be expecting. We need to be expecting his return. That it could be any moment. Are we getting ready? Are we getting ready? Hallelujah. Woo. Hallelujah. Have your Bibles turn to 2 Thessalonians and we'll get this in a moment. I'm going to continue on what uh, I believe the Lord has been in my assignment. And over the last several weeks, there's just been, and I've told our team and told my wife that there's just been, you know, on Sunday is just a teaching anointing. And, and so I believe that will continue this morning as well. And we'll, we'll get that in a, in a moment. I just, because it's important for us to expecting what God wants us to be expecting. You know, and we have this prophetic word and, and this prophetic word is, let's, let me read it. It says, And a new era has begun, and more and more signs and wonders will be seen in 2021 for those who will heed my voice and obey my words. And we talked about that last week. What will happen, those that are obedient to the word? It says, They'll experience my goodness and my power as never seen nor heard. It says, They'll see the fruit of their faithfulness come bursting forth, and they'll prosper and flourish like never before. 
abundance and overflow, that's what they'll see. I'll bring it to pass because of their love and their obedience to me. No longer will their enemy have the upper hand for my spirit is moving and outpouring my power is coming upon the land. Many triumphant victories will mark this new era. It's what I plan, so rest in me. Miracle after miracle, that's what I'll do. Decree it and receive it and know that it's true. Can you say that? Miracle after miracle. It's what he'll do. Amen? Hallelujah. Refuse to be swayed by what's said in the news. Some of you all need to really do that. Refuse. With me on your side, how can you lose? So stay with my word. It's faithful and true. I'll bring it to pass and great things I will do. Yes, a new era is here. It's already begun. And I plan marvelous things for 2021. Abundant overflow is the order of the day. So rest assured it's on its way. Your adversary can't stop what I've already decreed. So stay in faith and get ready to receive. Are you getting ready to receive? Amen. Amen. Allow no one to discourage you by what they say. Keep looking to me and I'll have my way. Tell my, tell my people they'll need to remain strong and stay close to me so they'll not be deceived by their enemy. His attacks will intensify and he'll try to prevail, but my power is greater and it shall not fail. Fear not nor be fretful over whatever shall come. The battle is mine. I've already won. Contrary to what you'll see or what you shall hear, 2021 will be a great year. A year of abundance and overflow. Amen. And it's already begun and it shall be so. Amen. And as I already said, the word said there's a great shaking, a great shifting, a great displacing, and afterwards a great awakening and a great outpouring. So these things and what I've established over the several weeks was this is what God has prepared. And remember in First, in first Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9, it says the things that God hath prepared, the things he's made ready, the things that he's put in order... <coughs> Excuse me, for those that, excuse me, <clears throat> it's easy for me to say. For those that love him, Isaiah 64 verse 4 says, The things that he has prepared for those that wait upon him. Now you take those two scriptures with waiting and love. Those that love him and those that wait upon him. What, see, if you wait upon him, that means you're devoted to him. If you love something, then you're devoted to that thing. So, so they're not different words necessarily. It's all about your pursuit. It's about what you're expecting. Those that are waiting upon him, is also, it talks about, about your expectation. If you, if you love someone, there's an expectation in that relationship. So the things that God has prepared. So the prophetic word is about pressing into and setting our mind and our heart on the things that he has prepared for us. And last week we talked about Psalm chapter 65, how God prepared the, he prepared the seed. We talked about how he prepared the ground. We talked about how he planted the seed. We talked about how he watered the seed. And not only that, but it said he blessed the seed. He blessed it. He blessed the springing thereof. And right after that, it said, immediately he said, and he crowns our year with his goodness. I want you to know when God blessed it, it not only that, but it, the, 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 the year had no option but to be fruitful. The, the, the field that he planted, the field that he prepared, the things that he made ready, and the thing that he blessed had nothing else to do but produce. And I'm telling you, when God's blessing is upon your life, he will crown your year with his goodness. Another way of crown is thinking about it this direction. It's, it's thinking about this, that he's established. See, something that's been crowned has been established. And I'm, I don't know about you, but I am going to see his goodness in my life. I believe he's prepared his goodness for my life in 2021. Can, can you repeat this after me? Heavenly Father, I thank you that you have prepared your goodness in my life. I will see your goodness all over my life in 2021. See, it's what he's prepared. It's what he's prepared. Actually, I told you, so hold your place in, in Thessalonians, uh, 2 Thessalonians, and let's go to Matthew chapter 7. I think I need to, need to shift just a little bit. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. He has planned and prepared wonderful things, goodness for 2021. But everything is going to be hinged upon heeding his voice and following his word. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 24, it says, Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine, and he does them, I will liken him to a wise man which built his house upon a rock. You see, last week we talked about hearing the word and doing the word. Now Jesus is talking about that the person that hears the word and does the word, it says, I will liken him, meaning I can, I can give you an example of what that person's like. I can, I can give you a picture of what, that, what, a, what a life looks like that is someone that hears the word and does the word. So this is giving us a model. This is giving something that, that, that we can see in our own lives that if I align myself and become a doer of the word, what it has the ability to produce in my life. And it tells me, Jesus is telling them that the person that does this, I liken him to a man that's built his house upon a rock. Well, why is that important? Well, the next verse tells us and says, and the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew. See, it didn't say that I will liken to this man that hears the word and does the word that he will not have any attacks. That he will not have any storms, that he will not have the the uh, the opportunity to be displaced or to be shaken. To be shifted. You see, this person that built his house upon a rock, he likes him to a man that built his house upon a rock. And, and it says, so when the floods do come, when the rain does come, it said it will, not, it will not fall. Why? Because what it's established on, it's established upon the rock. Well, how are you established upon the rock? Because you hear and you do. You hear and you do. And then it goes in and says, you know, the person that just heard the word, he goes, I'll liken him to the man that built his house Upon the sand. And when the storms came, come, and when the floods come, when the rain comes, when the storm beats again the house, it says, Great is the fall of it. You see, I want to encourage us this morning as we go forward that we cannot be moved by the atmosphere that the enemy creates. We as believers, cannot be moved by the atmosphere of what's happening in the world because we know who the God of this world is. Let's go to 2 Thessalonians now. See, we have to be founded upon a rock and being founded upon the rock means we hear and we do the word. So I'm committing to the prophetic word and the word of God. I'm, I'm committing to be a doer of this because it's in this that my life is built upon a rock. So when floods do come, when rains do come, when winds do come, I won't fall. This church will not fall. Verse one of, of chapter two. It says, now we beseech you, brethren... By the brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him. Now think about that. Now we beseech you, brother. So it's kind of like I'm pleading with you. I'm begging you. I need you to hear this because this is important. Church of Thessalonians. By the, I'm, I'm be, because Jesus is coming soon. And he's all talking about all those that are gathered together. Who would gather together? Talking about the church, the ecclesia. The called out ones, the ones that are called to act on his behalf in the earth. Verse two says, and what is the, what's the instruction? This is part of the beseeching part, that you be not soon shaken in mind. I, I've talked to a lot of people this week. And I'm, I, I've, I've talked to a lot of people and there's a lot of people that are just really shaken in mind. And I'm telling you, I have, I've had moments in my life, I have moments in my life that, that I've been shaken in mind. We're all, we, we are all have the opportunity to be shaken in mind. So we know he's talking about the last days here and he's talking to the people that are gathering unto him and he tells them 
that you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word. And that word spirit there is, is, it, is really talking about things that have come not from God. It's talking about false things. It's talking about that word spirit actually can be defined as something that's from God or something that's demonic. So this isn't referring to something because nothing God's going to bring is demonic. Amen. Right. So he's talking about the things that will cause you to be shaken in mind are things that would, 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 so don't be shaken in mind of what you hear. Don't, it even goes into other letters. He's even talking about false prophecies. He's talking about things that other people would teach that don't line up with the word of God. So here it's instructing us that we not be soon shaken in mind. We, why? Because we have to be founded upon a rock. Your family needs you to be founded upon a rock. As your pastors, we need you to be founded upon a rock. Our community and our world needs our church to be founded upon a rock. Don't be shaken in mind. Hallelujah. Don't be soon shaken in mind. This is a correction to all of us. If, if our lives are totally, totally based on, on, on things happening the way we think they should, then, then you're not basing your life upon the word. It doesn't matter what happens around. I'm established and founded upon a rock. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 1. Deuteronomy chapter 1. It's going to teach this morning. See, he sent the gifts to the church, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, for the perfecting of the saints to do the work of the ministry. And it goes on and says that we would not be tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. So we, that it goes back to we have to be founded upon something. We can't be tossed to and fro. Deuteronomy chapter 1. Verse 28 says, to what are we going up? Our brethren have made our hearts melt, saying, the people are bigger and taller than we are, and the cities are great and fortified to heavens, and moreover, we have seen the sons of Anakin there. Then I said to you, dread not, neither be afraid of them. So what, what, what's happening here? I want you to see this because this is how the enemy works. God had prepared a promised land for them. He's prepared a pr promised land for you. He's prepared a promised land for each one of us. But it said here, it said, our brethren have made our hearts melt saying, meaning we will be soon shaken in mind if we're going to receive what the brethren might say. We might be soon shaken in mind because of what the news might say. We might be soon shaken in mind by what a false prophet might say. So, so, so what you have to understand is there are voices and there's our, there are instructions that are going to come from do two different ways. There's going to be voices that come from God's kingdom and there's going to be voices that come from the enemy's camp. So here, this is a voice coming from the enemy's camp to do what? To keep them from what God's prepared for them. God had prepared a promised land for them. But immediately God's word, God's man brings forth the word. And what does he say immediately? Dread not, neither be afraid. Dread not, neither be afraid of them. Meaning the thing that's causing you to melt in your heart. I'm telling you, don't dread it. Don't be afraid of it. So see, now you have God's voice is always going to counteract the enemy's voice. That's why we always have to have the word of God coming into our hearts. That's why Jesus had to use the word of God when he encountered the enemy. Jesus, isn't it written? Isn't it written? And it says this, he says, then I said to you, so the, the word of God then came, don't dread, what does he tell him? The Lord your God who goes before you, he will fight for you just as he did for you in Egypt before your eyes. So then he goes back and has them remember. Just as he delivered you from Egypt, he's going to bring you into what he prepared. 
And I want to encourage you, just as he's redeemed your life, just as he saved your life, just as he's healed your body, he's going to bring you into what he's prepared for you in 2021. Verse 31, and in the wilderness where you have seen how the Lord your God bore you as a man carries his son all the way that you went until you came to this place. Meaning God has carried you all this way. Why are you going to let your heart melt now? Why are you going to let your heart melt right now? So we have to pay attention to what voices that we're hearing because the voice of the enemy will keep us from the prophetic word. It will keep us from what God has prepared for us. And he's prepared, I don't know about you, for you, but he's crowned my year with goodness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go to Jeremiah 29. So God's word counteracts the enemy's voice. And if you've been coming to Heritage of Faith, you know, I mean, for I think the first I think three years I, I ministered, the Lord had me use this verse some way, somehow in every message because it's really what brought me to the place I am today. And I know it's, it's so much more than just a scripture that's on a calendar or a coffee mug or, or whatever. You know, I know the thoughts and plans that I have for you. Thoughts of plans and peace and not evil to give you hope in your final outcome. You have to understand what was, why was God speaking to them about this? He was speaking to them about this because they were listening to wrong voices. The enemy was setting them up to be in bondage. The enemy was setting them to be in bondage far longer than, than, than what, what, God, what God was speaking. And so look at verse 1 of Jeremiah 29. It says, Now these are the words of the letter that Jeremiah the prophet sent from Jerusalem to the rest of the elders and exiles and to the priests, the prophets, and all the people. So God's having to send this because evidently elders were speaking the wrong thing. Evidently priests were speaking the wrong thing. Evidently prophets were speaking the wrong thing. And evidently all the people were having conversations about the wrong thing. Watch your conversation. Verse 2 says, it says, this was, uh, actually go to verse 3. This letter was sent by the hand of Elasa, son of Shaphan, and Gramiah, and son of Hilkah, whom Zedekiah, king of Judah, sent to Babylon, to Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, it said. So not only did he just send it to all the priests and everyone, but then, not only did they read it, but then they carried it to someone else. Do you think God wants to get this message into the right people's hands? Verse 4 says, thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all the captives, whom I have caused to be carried away into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Now, what is he saying to all the captives? You know, it's interesting. He doesn't doesn't go and say, just deal with your captivity. Deal with your bondage. And one day you're going to learn your lesson and you won't be captive any longer. That's not what the letter said. That's what everyone else was saying. Everyone was saying to them, you need to be subject to your environment. Everyone was saying, you need to be subject to this. Everyone was saying, this is our lot in life, and this is what we have to do with, deal with, and, and God is just this, and God is just that. That's what everyone was saying. But now God says, no, I need the final word. I, why? Because what God's word will always come to counteract the enemy's word. And what does he tell them? Verse 5. Build yourself houses and dwell in them. Now think about it. They're in captivity. I, I mean, when you see people in captivity, how often do you, you, you say, hey, why don't you just come in here? I'm going to have you in prison, but build houses. Build houses. See, it doesn't matter what environment you might be in. It doesn't change the blessing. It doesn't matter what it might look like. It doesn't matter. You, you, you have to understand how God can move in any situation, in any circumstance. It doesn't matter. So build houses and dwell in them. Plant gardens and eat the fruit of them. All this is while they're in captivity? And he says, take wives and have sons and daughters. Take wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage 
that they may bear, that they may bear sons and daughters. Multiply there and do not be diminished. So here they're in captivity. And, and yet God sends a message and tells them, hey, you're going to have houses. You're going to have sons and daughters. Your, your family is going to multiply. And it says you're not going to be diminished. What does that mean? You're not going to lack one thing. Meaning, it, what, what is God saying? Even though you might be in captivity, it's not going to change the blessing. It's not going to change my goodness on your life. It says, and seek the peace and welfare of the city to which you have been caused, you to be carried away captive. And pray to the Lord for it, for in welfare of the city, you will have welfare. See, I kind of see the church like this, so to speak, that we are just, we are just in this world. We're not of this world and we're just passing through. But yet God's placed the best blessing on our lives in the midst of a world that's cursed. And he tells us that, that, that the, the blessing of Abraham is upon us and that we are the righteous of God in Christ Jesus. So what is he telling them? He's saying, look, look, you're captive there, but you know what? Your city, your world, your na that nation is going to be blessed because you're there. Amen. Meaning even though you might be captive to them, they have to rely upon you. <laughs> then he says this for thus says the Lord verse 8 for thus says the Lord of hosts the God of Israel let not your prophets and your diviners who are in your midst deceive you pay no attention and attach no significance to your dreams which you have dreamed or to theirs see we sometimes we just play too much in to what we hear and what the enemy is saying. See, we're not talking about what God's saying. We're talking about what the enemy's saying. Now, it's interesting that in the King James, he uses this at the end of verse 8. He says, don't hearken to your dreams which you caused, which you caused to dream. Not God, what you caused to dream. Now, God, I was thinking about this. What does this mean, Lord, that you caused to dream? Now, this word, the second word dream here in the, in the Hebrew means this. It means to firmly bind to. Firmly bind to, meaning you're connected to this. Come, come here, Kevin, for a second. So when it's talking about this dream, put your arm, it's saying don't listen to what they're saying and don't hearken, meaning don't be obedient to or listen to your, the dream that you've caused to dream. So what am I saying here? Think of Kevin as a, as a thought, or a way of thinking. That's what they're saying. What, what happened is, is you're going around and you're thinking about that th thought so much. You're, and, and all of a sudden that thought is, is, is all of a sudden, you, where well, first was just an idea. It was just a concept. It was just something you were thinking. Now, all of a sudden now, is now changing your behavior. Now, all of a sudden now, you are, you, your life is totally controlled because of what you've been binding to. And so what is he telling them? Don't, don't go after the things you've been meditating on. The things that you've been, don't listen to it. You know, even this with Jesus, he, and some of you look at me kind of weird when I say this, not everything that Jesus heard was from God. We know it says he only did the things he heard his father he only said the things he heard his father say or do the things he saw his father do. But also in John 5, verse 30, Jesus said this. He goes, he goes as I hear, I judge. Meaning Jesus still had to judge everything he heard. And so the thing is, is, is we can't allow our environment to put us into this mold where we allow it to pull us away from the things that God has prepared. So don't even, he, he says, don't even listen to your own dreams. Then he says this. Verse 9 says, For they prophesy falsely to you in my name. I have not sent them, says the Lord. For thus says the Lord, when 70 years are completed for Babylon, I will visit, visit you and keep my good promise to you. 
causing you to return to this place. Then, for I know the thoughts and the plans that I have for you. So God had to speak that to them. For I know the thoughts and plans that I have for you, says the Lord. What do you say? Thoughts of peace. Now, what, what does this word thoughts of peace mean? Because even you're, you might be in, the, in captivity, you might be in, in that particular city or nation, people. You have to understand, I have thoughts about you. We may be going through challenging times as a nation, but you need to understand, for I know the thoughts that I have for you, says the Lord. And what are they? Thoughts of peace. And the thoughts of peace here doesn't mean that, that well, I have thoughts that you're, you're, not, you're not in captivity. I have thoughts that you're not this. No, the thoughts of peace there means my thoughts about you while you're in captivity are this, that you are entire. My thoughts of you are this, that you are whole. My thoughts of you, that you are sound. My, my thoughts of this, that there's nothing out of order in your life. My thoughts of peace to you are this, that you are healthy, spirit, soul, and body. Now, the King James says this, for I know the thoughts that I have towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not evil to give you hope and an expected end. Now, the King, I mean, Amplified uses, puts this in there, it says, and for welfare. What, is, what does that mean? The word in that in the Hebrew also means welfare in there as well. What does the word welfare mean? It means exemption from misfortune. Exemption. What does exemption mean? I'm free from obligation imposed by others. So when he says, I have thoughts of welfare towards you, meaning you are exempt what the world might be placing on you. <laughs> you are exempt. You are exempt. Hallelujah. You are exempt. Hallelujah. See, when, when Jesus died on the cross for you, there was this big red thing written in blood that he stamped exempt. <laughs> exempt. See, that's the thoughts that God has about you. That's the thoughts he has for you. Thoughts of peace. His thoughts about you are the things he's prepared for you. The thoughts he has for you are the fact that you're exempt in the environment that you're living in. I, I'm exempt. Hallelujah. I'm exempt from McFor Mc Mis I'm exempt from Mc uh, misfortune, calamity, or evil. Hallelujah! Also, the word welfare means this: the enjoyment of health and the common blessings of life. Hallelujah! Let me read that again: the enjoyment of health and the common blessings of life. So that's what God's thinking when He has peace and welfare towards you. Woo, you see, yeah, that's why I'm, I'm trying to believe the Holy Spirit's trying to establish that God has prepared things for us in 2021. But we can't allow the enemy's voice to be greater than what God has prepared. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Look at verse 31 of chapter 29. And stay with this thought just a little longer. Verse 30 says, Then came the word of the Lord unto Jeremiah, saying, So here we're getting God's, what God says, okay? He says this, Send to all them of the captivity, saying, Thus says the Lord concerning Shemaiah the ne Nehelamite, because that Shemaiah hath prophesied unto you, and I sent him not. And he calls you to trust in a lie. You see, that's what the enemy wants to do. He wants you to trust in a lie. But verse 32 says, Therefore thus says the Lord, Behold, I will punish Shemaiah, the ne Nehelamite, and his seed. He shall not have a man to dwell among the people, neither shall he behold the good that I will do to my people. Amen. Woo! See, the enemy wants to, wants to prophesy things. He wants to, he, wants, he wants to give you a voice that's trying to shake you to deter you, to move you away from what God's prepared. But he says, don't listen to his voice because his voice is a lie. And he says this, that he says, he goes, that he's not even going to see the good that I will do to my people. Whew. <laughs> what does good look like to you? 
We could change that word. The goodness, the goodness that I will do to my people. So let's not be soon shaken in mind because of what might, be, what might happen around us. Why? Because we have the word. We have the word. And the man that hears the word and does the word is like a man that built his house upon a rock. You seeing this this morning? Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you. For the good, the good that he wants to do. Let's look at chapter 30, verse 1. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying. So God's speaking something else to Jeremiah. Thus speaketh the Lord God of Israel saying. Now what is he saying? Write thee all the words that I have spoken unto thee in a book. Have, have you written down what God has said is yours? This, this is written down, and it's, it's online that you can print it out. We, we did your homework for you. There's plenty of prophetic words that have come from this pulpit just since October. There's, there's things in this word that are rightfully yours. And what is Jeremiah telling them? He's, he's telling them to tell them, to all the things that God has prepared, write it in a book. <laughs> Hallelujah. In the verse three, why? It says, for lo, the days come, says the Lord, that I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel and that Judah says to the Lord, and I will cause them to return to the land. Meaning, write down what God has said because what God wants them to know is, I want them to know that I'm going to take them to what I prepared for them. And I want to encourage you this morning, God is going to take you to what he's prepared for you. He's going to take us for what he has prepared for us. But what we have to do is not be soon shaken in mind. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Oh, Go to Proverbs chapter 4. So he tells them to write these words in a book. Dr. Savell has a, has a, uh, a journal that is taught his personal time with the Holy Spirit. And, there, and that's part of what he, what, why he created that was so in your personal time with God, you could write down what God said to you. Amen. Write down what God said to you. Because what he said to you is what he's prepared for you. What he's made ready for you. Proverbs chapter 4. So he tells him to write these things down in a book. And then he says this to, through Solomon in chapter, chapter 4 verse 20. He says, my son, attend to my words. My son, attend to the words. This is a word to attend. This doesn't mean listen to. It means to hearken to. I mean, it means to heed it. I mean, it just doesn't mean to hear it, but it means to be a doer of it. My son, attend to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Why? Be, and then it says this, let not them depart from thy eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Why? For they are life unto them that find them and health to all your flesh. Meaning the things that I want you to attend to, I want those things to, to not depart from your heart. Not depart from your heart, but keep them in your heart. Why? Because they're life and health to all your flesh. They're medicine. It's medicine. See, when you read this word, this word is medicine to counteract what the enemy is saying. This word is God's word and it is medicine and it counteracts what the enemy is saying. That's why he's saying write it in a book. Attend to it. Don't let it depart. Why? Because as you meditate on it and you're thinking about it and you're doing it, it is medicine and it is life and health to all your flesh. Yes. Meaning it is not just this, but it affects every area of my life. Yes. Then he says this, keep thy heart with all diligence. Why do we need to keep our heart with all diligence? Because right before that, he says, let it not depart from our eyes. Meaning what's going into your heart, don't let it keep, keep, keep your heart with what you're, what you're standing on. He says, put away from you a froward mouth, perverse lips far, far, far from you. Let your eyes look right on and let your eyelids look straight before you. Let me read this in the Amplified, verse 
20 says, My son, attend to my words. Consent and submit to my sayings. Let them not depart from your sight. Keep them in the center of your heart. See, the sayings are what he's prepared. Keep the sayings. Hallelujah. For out of it flows the springs of life. Put away from you false, dishonest speech. Those are what words that don't come from God. Let your eyes look right on with fixed purpose and let your gaze be straight before you. Consider well the path of your feet and let all your ways be established in order to right. Turn not to the right hand or the left and don't remove your, and, and, and remove your foot from evil. What am I, why am I bringing this out? Because we have to be founded upon a rock. We need to attend to the word, what God has said. Look straight on with fixed purpose. Not moving to the left hand or the right. Don't speak wrong things. You see, this is what causes us to walk in all that God's prepared. Now, let me start to close with this. John chapter 10. John chapter 10. Hallelujah. Thank God for the word. Thank you that you're leading us into all that you have prepared for us, Father. John chapter 10. Hallelujah. Let's look at verse 6. Now, before I read this, Jesus is starting to tell them a parable, and he talks about, he talks about that his sheep, it says, my sheep will hear my voice. And it says that the sheep will follow him because they, because they know his voice. And it says, then it goes and says that they'll never follow a stranger, but they'll run away. So we know in this chapter it's dealing with two different voices. Verse 6 says, Jesus used this parable with them, but they did not understand what he was talking about. So Jesus said again, I assure you most solemnly, I tell you that I myself am the door for the sheep. And all who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to and obey them. I am the door. Anyone who enters through me will be saved. He will come in and he will go out and he will find pasture. What is, what is he saying here? He, he's letting us know that there'll always be two different voices. There'll be the voice of the shepherd and there'll be the voice of a stranger. It says all that went before him, what does it say? They're thieves and they're robbers. Meaning this voice that went before, this voice that is a stranger, what is that voice? It's a voice that's trying to take from you. It's a voice that's trying to steal from you. But Jesus, I am, I am that door. I am the door. Anyone enters through me will be saved. So when you follow my voice, it will bring wholeness to your life. Not only that, but my voice will cause you to come in and go out freely. And what? You're going to find pasture. What's that mean? You're going to find satisfaction. I believe if you've, if you've been find pasture, then you found his goodness. So what are we seeing here? We're seeing that there's two different voice, voices. There's one voice that's a thief and a robber, and there's another voice that is one that leads you into his goodness. Verse 10 tells us what? The thief comes. So you could say this. Remember, it's based on voices, not just nature. We know this is the nature's, the, the, nature's, um, the enemy's nature, but how does he activate his nature? It's through his voice. He wants you to listen to his voice. And what does his voice do? The thief call, come only. The thief only comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So what, what can I, how can I connect this? I connect it because the stranger's voice is meant to do what? To steal, to kill, and destroy. Are you connecting that? I'm, like I said, it's teaching this morning. So, so as we connect this, what does the other voice do? Then if the, the stranger's voice steals, kills, and destroys, what does the other voice do? It says that I have come. I came. My voice comes. My voice will come so that you may have and enjoy life and have it in abundance. Amen. Woo! So what voice are we going to follow? What instructions are we going to follow? Will it be the stranger's voice or will it be God's voice? Because when I follow 
The enemy's voice, it lets me know, stealing, killing, and destroying. But God's voice, abundant life. Let's go to later in the chapter, go to verse 25. I'm going to skip a few things. But. Verse 25, Jesus answered them, I told you and you believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But you believe not because you are not of my sheep. As I said to you, my sheep hear my voice and I know them in what they follow me. So it's not just being able to hear his voice, but it's following that voice. So we're following instructions. And what happens when we follow the instructions? It says, I have given unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Get an image of that. When I'm following his voice, I'm following what God's prepared for me. It says that nothing shall pluck me out of his hand. Just put your hand out like this for a moment. See yourself in Jesus' hand. Abundant life is there. Abundant life is there. Abundant who Jesus is the word made flesh. So when I'm hearing and doing the voice of the word, then what happens? I put myself in a position to rest in his hand. And then it says this. Verse 29, my father, which gave them me, me, the father that put them in my hand is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. Now get, get an image of this. As we follow the word and we follow his voice into the things, abundant life, the goodness of God, we are in Jesus' hand. But Jesus says, my father is greater than all. And then he says this, and nothing shall pluck them out of my father's hand. So get an image. You are in Jesus' hand and Jesus is in his father's hand and nothing shall move you off of that. See, if we understand we're following God's voice and we're understanding we're following God's word, we should not be soon shaken in mind. We are soon shaken in mind when we're choosing to listen to another voice. But when we're holding on to his voice, it will cause us to remain steady in his hand. Are you in his hand today? Yeah, there's things that we're going to see in this world. We're, prophetic word says there'll be a great shaking, a great shifting, a great displacing. But afterward, there'll be a great awakening and a great outpouring. Well, I believe my part the last several weeks has been to awaken us to the will and the plans and the purposes of God. Let me close with this. Go to Psalms 30. Psalms 30. Hallelujah. Thank you for the word. I just sense faith is being built. I believe faith is rising. I believe the, 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 the anointing to teach is here and you're laying hold of it and it's, and, it's, and it's bringing strength to you. Now this is something for us to rejoice about. Now remember everything I've just said about resting in God's hand. Let's look at verse 16 of Psalms 90. He says, let thy work appear unto thy servants in thy glory unto their children. So Psalms 90, verse 16. Amplified says, Psalms 90, verse 16. Did, what did I say? Oh, sorry. I'll let it give you, give you a moment to get there. Psalms 90, verse 16. Amplified says, Let your work, the signs of your power, be revealed to your servants. Wow. Let your work, the signs of your power, be revealed to your servants. I believe a great awakening was talking about to be awakening to purpose, awaken to things. I, I'm praying that as for us, that our eyes, that things would be revealed to us. Let your work, the signs of your power, be revealed to your servants and your glorious majesty to their children. Verse 17. And let the beauty and the delightfulness and the favor of the Lord our God be upon us. Confirm and establish the work of our hands 
Yes, the work of our hands confirm and establish it. Now, see that? We are in God's hands as we are heeding and following his voice, okay? I want you to see that as our position of favor. See, when you are in his hand and you're following his voice, it's what push, positions you in favor. And this says here, and let the beauty and delightfulness and the favor of the Lord our God be upon us. Confirm and establish the work of your hands. Who's that? We're the work of his hands. Then it says this, yes, let the work of our hands confirm and establish. Meaning, meaning do something in my life that you establish me. Now, Father, I thank you that you are doing now a work through me. See, as we walk into the things he's prepared for us, I believe we're going to see his favor rest upon us. And I believe we're going to see him confirm things through us. Amen. 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 2021 is going to be a marvelous year. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your word today. And I thank you for your favor that rests upon your people. I thank you for the victory that we walk in. I thank you for the abundant life that we walk in. I thank you that abundant life is flowing in this place. Even now, as the word has gone forth, I thank you that healing power is flowing in this room and in this place. I thank you for a spirit of victory manifesting on each life here. I thank you that we live with a spirit of victory, that we will not be soon shaken in mind, but our life will be built upon a rock. And when floods come, when storms come, it we will not fall, but we will be a testimony of your favor and we will rest in your hand. I declare that heritage of faith is blessed coming in and blessed going out. I declare that they're healed in their body. I declare that they operate in the miraculous and we will see your goodness in the land of the living and we will step into all you have prepared for us in Jesus' name. Give them a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning. Pastor, that was awesome. Amen. We shouldn't be surprised. Second Timothy chapter 3, it says very clearly in verse 1, it says, Know this also, that in the last days perilous times shall come. We're in the midst of perilous times, wouldn't you say? But how many of you also know this? He also said, he said, we live, we move, and we have our being in him. So we can rest and we can be of peace and operate in everything that God has for you and I. Well, I'm here to uh, receive our tithes and our offerings this morning. And how many of you know it's a blessing to give? We are so blessed to be able to plant seed into the kingdom of God and to perpetuate what the Lord is doing. Souls being saved, people being healed, delivered and set free by the power of God. This morning, we have, you can either give by way of text, you can give by way of, through the, through the internet, the website, or if you're here, you can give by uh, an envelope that's in the seat in front of you to be a blessing to the Lord. Also, the container, as, as we leave this morning, the container is back in the back for you to drop it off. But in 2 Corinthians, I want to read this to you. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 through 11 in the Amplified Bible. It says, now remember this, he who sows sparingly will also reap <coughs> sparingly. And he who sows generously, say I'm a generous giver. That blessings may come to others will also reap generously and be blessed. Say I'm blessed. Let each one give thoughtfully and with purpose, just as he has decided in his heart, not grudgingly or under compulsion. For God loves a cheerful giver and delights in one whose heart is in his gift. And God is able to make all grace, every favor and every blessing under all circumstances, regardless of the need, have complete sufficiency in everything, being completely self-sufficient in him, and have an abundance for every good work and act of charity. 
as it is written and forever remains written, he, the benevolent and generous person, scattered abroad, he gave to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. Now he who provides seed for the sower and bread for food will provide and multiply your seed for sowing, that is, your resources, and increase the harvest of your righteousness, which shows itself in active goodness, kindness, and love. You will be enriched in every way so that you may be generous and uh, may be generous and in this generosity administered through us is producing thanksgiving to God for those who benefit. How many of you know that the giver is still the greater receiver? You can't outgive the Lord. The Lord is going to continue bless you back because that's just his nature. That's just the way he is. The thief came to steal from you. He came to kill and to destroy. But as the scripture says, he said, I've come that you might have life and have that life more abundantly. He said, give, give, give your love, give your peace, give your joy. Just give, plant the seed and see what God will do. Amen. Let's pray over our seed. It's going to be sown. Father, we just praise you. We thank you again for the opportunity to plant seed into the kingdom of God. As we do, we're not going to do it grudgingly. We're not going to do it because of necessity, even though there might be need. Because you've promised to supply all of our need according to your riches and glory. We give our, our gifts cheerfully to you because we're excited about what the word is going to produce in our lives. In Jesus' name, bless the gift. Bless the givers abundantly. Amen. Good morning. If you got up this morning in the snow and ice and you decided to come to church anyway and you're new, welcome. There's a card for us to connect with you. Maybe you're at home and you needed a church to watch online. If you're watching online, you can connect with us at info at heritageoffaith.com. Send us an email and let us know you watched. If you're in here this morning and you're new, you can fill out a card and then somebody in the lobby will greet you and we have a free gift for you that we want to give you before you leave. All right, so Connect class for today was rescheduled for next Sunday. So if you're part of that new Connect class, we'll be meeting next Sunday, January 17th, immediately after the service. There, um, so Dr. Savell will be ministering next week also, so you won't want to miss it. He'll minister next week, the 17th, and on the 24th. So we're going to have back-to-back -back services in the 11 o'clock service with him, and then Pastor will be ministering in the 9. So Thrive Group Sunday, that was next week, will now be moved to the 4th Sunday. So we can have Connect class next week, and then Thrive Group Sunday will be on the 24th. So check your Church Center app for all those details and for all those groups. If you haven't found a Thrive Group yet that you want to be a part of, all the groups are listed online, and you can find them there. Now, if you haven't downloaded the Church Center app, shame on you. I'm just kidding. But we are communicating through to you through the Church Center app and through emails. And so if you haven't gone on there and checked to make sure that your information is correct, then you probably didn't receive today's emails that the 11 o'clock service has been canceled. <laughs> so so please uh, make sure your information on there is correct. Um, you can go on and check what your information is, whether it's your birthday or your phone number or your email or even your physical address so that we can mail you. Even we, we even do snail mail around here. So please go on there and check it out. If you haven't downloaded the Church Center app, there is somebody in the lobby to help you with that today. And you can always ask any of our welcome team to help you with that. All right, that's all the announcements for today. Let's pray before you leave. Father, we just thank you for the word today. Father, we just thank you for everything you have prepared for us in 2021. Father, we know it's going to be great. The word that you gave us before this year, ever we ever even entered into this year, Father, was that you had things on your mind. You had things prepared and things you want to do. So, Father, we get behind what you want to do. We'll keep talking about it like the song today. We will shout it. We will sing it. We will talk about it. And, Father, we will watch your goodness and your greatness come to pass in 2021. Father, I thank you for abundant overflow in every life. Father, bless every giver as they drop their offering in today. Bless their lives, their homes, their families. I thank you that your blessing will continue to work on our behalf. In Jesus' name, amen. Turn to your neighbor. Give them Jesus. Jesus.